Now we've spoken about the availability heuristic, but there's another heuristic I, I really like called representativeness. Now Danny Kahneman already introduced us to this character uh, called Linda the bank teller. And Linda is described as you know, uh, very outgoing and bright. Uh, as, as a student, she was really uh, passionate about social justice issues and discrimination, uh, and uh, she even participated in anti-nuclear demonstrations. Now, when you ask people, uh, is Linda a bank teller or a feminist bank teller, people are way more likely to report that Linda is a feminist bank teller, even though just thinking about the base rates and the probability, there are way more bank tellers than there are feminist bank tellers. So what, what the Linda example sets up is a kind of conflict between uh, probability and base rates on one hand, what, what is actually true, versus uh, representativeness on the other. And so those two things conflict and uh, representativeness wins. So the, the description of, of Linda being so representative of uh, a feminist sort of you know, pushes the probability down and we're more likely to respond that, that that Linda is a feminist bank teller. And this, this works not only for uh, kind of toy scenarios like the Linda problem, um, but it's kind of, it's, it's broader than that. And so it, it, it's kind of more general in terms of category learning. And so if, if you think, for example, about um, fruit. So when I, when I say fruit, what's the first thing kind of that comes to mind? It's probably an apple or an orange or something. Not a tomato or you know pumpkin, right? Which are also fruits, but they're probably not the first thing you'd think of. Um, you do the same thing with, I don't know, um, a grocery store clerk, right? When you we have these ideas about the way that things are supposed to work, and when you walk into a grocery store, for example, you have an idea about who works there and who doesn't, right? And I've made this mistake in the past. You know, I've walked into a grocery store, and I asked somebody. Uh, where the lime juice was, you know, those little containers of lime juice. So I walk in, where's, where's this, where does this belong? And the guy says, I don't actually work here. But he had a clipboard, right? That's what gets me. The guy had a, the guy had a clipboard. Who walks around, you know, the grocery store with a clipboard? But, you know, he doesn't have, uh, he didn't fit, he f totally fit the mold of somebody who worked in the store because he had a clipboard and he was walking around, he even had a tie, right? So. I was confused. But for the most part, I mean, that, that kind of example demonstrates that for the most part, it gets us by. When I walk into a store, I can always tell who works there 99% of the time. And so this idea of representativeness, of relying on prototypes, uh, gets us by most of the time. But we can kind of create these sort of scenarios where uh, we don't operate you know, with 100% accuracy. And so uh, Danny Kahneman and Amos Tversky had to create this sort of Linda problem, so she really fit the mold of a feminist bank teller um, to kind of trick people in a sense to, to fall into this sort of mistake. And what we're gonna do now is present another example, one from, again, uh, Danny Kahneman and Amos Tversky uh, that they came up with, um, where we talk about Rudy, who's, uh, who's in a similar sort of vein as, as the Linda, uh, the, 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 the famous uh, feminist bank teller. So let's see if people still make the same sort of error when it comes to Rudy.